<laughs> My final guest tonight is by any standards a remarkable man. As cultural attaché to the court of St. James, he gained an international reputation for his quick wit and temperate behaviour. Knighted by Gough Whitlam, he's become a symbol to the outside world of all that is enviable in the Australian way of life. I couldn't agree more with the critic who said that he impugns the fundamental refinement of the Australian character. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Les Patterson. I'm not hello, 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 little Martin. How are you, Jackie? Don't worry, how are you, Bella? Sorry, Jackie. <laughs> You're spilling all that stuff down your new... Is I'm that a new suit? <laughs> it's a brand new... <laughs> it's a brand new bag of fruit I've got on, Mike. And it's very good to see you. <laughs> Beautiful. Good luck here. And hello there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a... I must got a handful of pasta <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling? I'm not feeling too bad. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Now, of course, images. <laughs> Im oh, sorry, Mike. What is it? I've got in my hands. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's an ointment. I'm supposed to use. <laughs> I was, I was just giving myself a quick application before the shower. <laughs> I'm supposed to use an applicator, but I generally do. <laughs> no worries. So, uh, yeah. Now this, let's talk. <laughs> You'll be all right on your next trip to the Philippines, mate. <laughs> Are you with me? No worries. Now what about Lady Gwen? Lady Gwen, How my she? wife. Yes. She's very similar to your wife. She never sees me. She never sees me. It's sad. Gwen, she's nice, but she's boring. It's terrible. She could bore an arsehole on a wooden horse, my wife. <laughs> no, I mean that lovingly. I mean that lovingly. Lady Gwyneth, of course. Lady Gwen, yes, yes she is. Yeah. How is she? Oh, she's a... No, I haven't heard from her lately, but... Oh, she's a marvellous person. You know, she's tremendously loyal and... Uh, oh, a former model. What former model? I don't know. A model for the monster from the Black Lagoon, I guess. <laughs> she's not watching, I might say. She gets the news. I mean, she gets the newspapers, but they're always censored, like the newspapers in prisoner, you know? Yes. They're like a doily when she gets them. <laughs> My wife, I gave her a dog last Christmas to keep her company. She's as lonely as buggery, my wife. And uh, I bought her this dog, and she called me up a couple of months ago, and she said, Liz, a dog doesn't respond to my whistle anymore. My wife would whistle, the dog would come to her, because she whistles naturally. She's always had a loose denture. And, uh, the dog, she said, I'm whistling, the dog hasn't moved. What should I do? I said, go along to the vet. Oh, I better still just go to the chemist and buy some of that stuff in a tube that takes the hair off, a depilatory. Because I said, you better get it because the dog's got hair in it. See, it's that's right. I can't hear you whistling. So you get the cream. So she said she went to the chemist and he said, well, look, before she could say anything, he said, if you're using it on your legs, plenty of soap and water because it's caustic. And he said, if it's for the armpits, more soap and water. And if you're using it on your face, Lady Patterson... Really, you better wash it off quick. She said, well, actually, it's for my schnauzer. <laughs> and, and, and he said, he said, in that case, he said, don't ride a bike for a fortnight. <laughs> That's what he said. But, but 
lot of the actresses, you know, I mean, uh, I know them all personally. I can't name names on this show because, uh, you know, there's been moments when when my fidelity to my wife has been put to a pretty severe test <laughs> and come off second best, I can <laughs> tell Can you think of... Uh, any, I mean, was this a question of girls being being forward, being uh, oh, overwhelmed by your sexuality? I do get a bit. You know, I, was, uh, I had an embarrassing experience uh, in a London taxi. Uh, hmm? uh, yes, we were. I had this little lass. <laughs> she was a star of one of my films, and uh, we, I was showing her the sights of London. You know, Buckminster Castle, St Paul's <laughs> Abbey, <laughs> Trafalgar Circus, and we're driving around. <laughs> And I kid you not, you know, this little Sheila done a streak in the back seat of the car. I didn't know where to look. <laughs> and we got to our destination. The driver says, that'll be so-and-so, you know. And uh, he says, how are you going to pay me? And she... Fl oh, I'm sorry, I can't say it, but she done an Erica. <laughs> an Erica. She done an Erica, but not the top part. She flashed the map of Tasmania, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> For those of you who aren't too crash out of the geography, Tasmania is a triangular continent. A bit on the bushy side. Oh, no, please. Oh, for goodness sake. I've, uh, I've been getting ready and helping little kids and things. I... I've got my elves busy. I've got a special little elf, a lovely little woman you might enjoy, Thomas. Oh, yeah? Yeah, she's Scandinavian. Her name is Astrid. Oh, Astrid. It's a Scandinavian name. It means a stride. <laughs> <laughs> Except the, the E is silent, as in, as in rection. It is. <laughs> Astrid. She's from Lapland, and she's a dancer. Are you with me? <laughs> A lap dancer. Uh, gotcha, yeah. <laughs> Have you got anybody with you uh, on this trip? You, are you a company? Oh, I've just got my uh, research assistant. Research assistant? Little girl Friday. Lovely. How are you, darling? Yes, sir. Uh, 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 where did you find her? Well, she's an Australian lass. She's from the outback. I've had her for the last uh, day and a half, as a matter of fact. <laughs> she jetted over here to join me. I've got a bit of a turnover in secretaries, I have to be quite frank with you, Michael. It's the pressure, you see. Tremendous pressure these women are under. But uh, her name is... Uh, her name is Cliveen Jamesagong, as a matter of fact. It's an old Australian name. Now, do you... Uh... Go to the same tailor all the time. Well, I have a little bloke up there in Kowloon, <laughs> which is a suburb of Hong Kong, and I get about half a dozen at a time. And he sends me a Christmas card once a year. It's nice, isn't it? Very, very nice indeed. And gives you a drink while he's making the suit. Yeah. Are they impressed by your figure? Well, of course, the first time I had this little bloke, a lovely little <laughs> oriental fella, he was down on his knees with his mouth full of pins. <laughs> Looked like a shark. <laughs> and he ran the uh, tape up my inside leg. <laughs> Might like to do that later, Jackie. <laughs> and, uh, he said, what side do you dress? Dress, I think. What side do you dress? I, I said, no worries, just make it a bit baggy round the knees. That's what I said. <laughs> Is it, what's the image that you're trying to, to project? I think you'd better phrase that again, Michael. I think, <laughs> what is the image that I am bloody successful in projecting? <laughs> and, and that is, as a, Australia, as a thinking organism. Being such a, a, a public figure, I mean, you obviously have to watch your behaviour in, in, in public. And, and well, I mean, you must. Now, what about the journalists, you see? How do you deal with them? So journos. Journos. Well, they're difficult, you know. Sometimes they get you in the gun. You know, you might have had that experience. You know, you're a big, you're a big name. You're very, very good at your job. You're an ace, Mike. And as soon as they know that, you know, they start trying to pull the rug out from under you. No worries. We've had it in our respective fields, this little actress here. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> Some 
to have stiff competition, you know. <laughs> I'm glad that you could you could make it just to join us for a few moments uh, from the sunburnt land. Uh, yeah. long way away. Well, someone had to pick this show up off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> How lovely to be on this show. <laughs> what have you just noticed, Mark? <laughs> 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 This is a time. This is a Tom, Christmas, this Tom's is, got a bit of competition tonight. This, this is a Christmas show. This is a Christmas show, show and I must, <laughs> I must draw. You got my old trousers on, yeah, I think. You know, you could say this is the international year of Australia already, couldn't you, Mike? Well, you could. It's been fantastic, the publicity we're getting, and largely due to the efforts of my good self. You know, it wasn't many moons ago that they thought we were a bunch of rough diamonds down. <laughs> but you know, we've got more culture than a penicillin factory in Australia. I'm you that. No worries. The big prizes, the glittering prizes of political life. And you know, I'm inclined to shun them. You know, they're presented to me, these cubes, these mystery packages, and I think to myself, I'd prefer to just roll along the way I am. I'm chairman of the Australian Cheese Board. <laughs> I was sitting on the Cheese Board only this afternoon, as a matter of fact. A bit of Tasmanian Stilton must have rubbed off. <laughs> sitting on a Cheese Board is no easy task, I can tell you. Them flags dig into your bum. <laughs> and... Uh, I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of the role. I'm very proud of the role that I've played there. You know, uh, I had a lovely idea for a film a few years ago. It was going to be called, it was about a football team uh, going to the bush. It was called Piss Up on Hanging Rock. <laughs> I reckon, though, that you might have picked a pretty good box with that safe seat in Canberra right now. I reckon that was the best box old Bazza ever picked, eh? <laughs> There's a box I could pick right now, I'm telling you that. And that is, I don't know, there are so many boxes offered to me. Viewers, I'm not a show pony. I'm not a show pony. I'm a stayer. I'm a survivor. You're a survivor. And old Baz is a survivor. <laughs> And I would like to prevail upon this channel to give me a couple of minutes because I've written a little poem for you. I'm not just talk, I'm putting, I, I can have the creative ability myself. And I've written this poem, and I'd like, if I may, to read it. Have I your permission, Mr. Producer? No worries. <laughs> Could we have a bit of mood music in the background, son, eh? No worries? No worries. No worries. Ode to Parky by Celeste Patterson. <laughs> Cop this. There's a bloke who's keenly watched and widely read, who always hits the nail on the head. In the UK he started his career, now he's hit the jackpot over here. If he gets nervous, well, it's never showed. His face is like a mile of rugged road. <laughs> His crow's feet are the dried up beds of smiles and his best friends are aware that he's got piles. <laughs> piles, piles of charm. <laughs> pizzazz, pizzazz and British spunk and phlegm. <laughs> of TV interviewers, he's the gem. He can interview a Zulu or a Raki and make it interesting. His name is Parky. <laughs> this bloke can conjure laughter and applause in the wake of rat bags, poofs and crashing boards. <laughs> and if he's pushed for spicy dialogue, he'll ask you if you've ever nudged the grog. <laughs> the TV critics, the TV critics here are chippy guys. They'll try to chop old Parky down to size. A few might say, go back where you come from. We won't be taught charisma by a pom. <laughs> but he knows the average Aussie journalist. He's following orders, jealous or half pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cut that, I'll cut that. <laughs> Keep saying they'll cut it, they won't cut it. <laughs> he smiles, he does his job, 
He doesn't care. When you're the ace, where do you go from there? So, whether you be Hun, or Nip, or Darky, <laughs> raise your glass of lager, rum, or sake, and drink to my old cobber, dear old Parky. Good luck. <laughs>